So, I've been taking a bit of a backwards trip through the Monster Hunter franchise. I started with World, went back to Gen U, and now I'm making my way through For You. Usually, I stream Worldborn and Gen U a lot, but with For You, I really want to absorb every bit of the content that I can without the pressure of keeping up a stream schedule. So, this is probably going to be an installment of the franchise that I kind of keep closer to the chest and make VOD content instead, as I am now. Honestly, sitting here writing this script, I really just want to get back to playing more for you. Even though it's still pretty much the same monsters I've fought before, I did get to fight a great Jaggy for the first time. And while Jaggy isn't the most exciting monster, still a solid beginner monster though. That feeling of getting to fight a new monster and not knowing what to expect is such a great feeling. But that's enough of me rambling. Let's get into my very early impressions of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Now, from the title, it probably sounds like I'm going to be preaching to you, and honestly, I kind of am. I've praised Monster Hunter on many occasions for the way that it takes its impeccable core of their games, throws in some game-changing mechanics that still hold true to its identity, while not making it feel like they're just dumping a coat of paint on things or rehashing the same old same old. With Gen Yu, we probably got one of my favorite implementations in a game period, let alone just the Monster Hunter franchise. Weapon styles took what was an already expansive amount of choice with 14 weapons and greatly expanded that with 6 styles and even the Prowler system that gave us essentially a 15th weapon. Worldborn didn't carry over these styles, but it did give each weapon a wide core moveset and introduced a very polarizing mechanic with the Clutch Claw that heavily influenced the hunter's approach to a hunt. Rise will see us taking to the air with wire bugs and pulling off stylish, fast-acting moves and counters on the regular. Now, don't get me wrong, I love those games, and outside of maybe the Clutch Claw, I love everything about those games and the boundaries they were willing to push. But getting to experience a stripped-down, clean Monster Hunter and 4U has been refreshing. It's hard to put into terms without making it seem like I'm bashing one end of the spectrum because I definitely don't want to do that. Right off the bat, it was a little different not seeing some kind of gauge at the bottom of my screen, whether it be for hunter arts or silkbind moves, and I can't tell you how many times I've hit a bumper to try and do the spin attack with the hunting horn. Do I miss that spin? Absolutely. It was one of the best moves added to Monster Hunter. That's what a fun, clean experience like 4U can do. You still have an absolute blast while gaining so much appreciation for the moves and mechanics that have been added throughout the series. There's something incredible in all of it. Just you and the weapon, its core set of moves, and that's it. There's no mantles here, there's no instant teleportation to a monster's head or tail so you can soften it up. It's you, your weapon, and the monster. It almost feels akin to a monk-like experience where you purge everything and break the chains that were binding you. All right, maybe I'm taking it a little too far, but it really is a different kind of gratifying to take down a monster with your core moveset and nothing else. You feel that much more skillful, and honestly, in my experience, I actually enjoy some of the weapons more in For You than I did in the later titles because of the stripped down combat, but there will be more on that later. Now, we do need to talk about a mechanic that was added in this very entry of the series. Yeah, I mean, again, the title pretty much does the job here, but to dive in a little further, they really needed to tune mounting after 4U, and it's clear right from the jump. You can mount the monsters with absolute ease, which in itself isn't super bad, but the problem more so is how easy it is to repeatedly mount the monsters. It doesn't seem like there's a threshold increase on the amount of mounting damage that you need to do, and if there is, it doesn't seem like a very high increase. And this might even change as you get to the higher tier difficulty monsters. I'm going in pretty blind, so if you know more into this, then let me know in the comments. It's kind of tough to not exploit this too, since there's a lot of ledges and things to leap off of. It's so easy that I've gotten to the point that I'm kind of limiting myself to just two mounts per monster. But this is what happens when you push the boundaries. Yeah, sometimes you don't nail it on the first go, but the mounting system we enjoy in Gen Yu, Worldborn, and the Wyvern riding in Rise never would have been a thing if 4U didn't take that leap and mount the challenge at hand. One thing that I do find really cool with the mounting system here is that having others hit the monster while you're trying to topple it can actually knock you off the monster. I remember talking to NECA while we were playing to test out multiplayer and saying that I understand and like either implementation. It makes sense that hitting the monster would make it easier to topple, 
but it also makes sense that, you know, swinging in that direction could knock the mounter off the monster altogether. Some weapons even get really cool mounting moves to make it even easier. Speaking of weapons, let's take a quick look at what weapons are the ones I'm the most interested in using so far. Now this is an early prediction, and I kind of want these predictions to be put on wax so I can see just how much things end up changing as I get further into the game. I've tried out all the weapons and plan on continuing to do so, especially since element and status weapons are coming into play, but I think we'll start with one that will definitely make you guys hate me. The longsword is a weapon that I honestly barely touched in most of the other games. It didn't grip me in Worldborn. Gen Yu's styles changing up the way that you approach your spirit round slash was cool, but still not enough to really draw me in. And Rise's longsword definitely appeals to me more than Worldborn, but it's probably still one on the lower end of my list. But when you strip away all the counters, endless iframes, and super flashy moves, believe it or not, I really enjoy using this weapon that much more. That very well may be why I don't like the longsword in other titles, or it might just be a bit too bloated for me. In For You though, I get endless enjoyment out of looping through combos to get my spirit gauge up, fade slashing at just the right time and direction, and deciding whether I want to take the shortcut to the third spirit slash, or if I want to rip off the combo in its entirety. It sounds simple, and honestly it pretty much is. But landing that last round slash and just retaining that red gauge is perfect for me. Another factor that comes into play for the longsword is the fact that I'm still in the very early stages where the weapons have abysmal sharpness and having those spirit slashes come in very clutch. Plus, let's be honest, it has some of the best looking weapon designs. Next up is the heavy hitting chonker, the hammer. The hammer is a weapon that I can go to against any monster in pretty much any Monster Hunter game. It has one goal and that is to absolutely destroy whatever horn, crown, or flashing ball that might be on the monster's head. And by god, does it do it extremely well in For You. As much as I love the super duper spin smash aka spinning meteor in Gen Yu and your standing level 3 charge in Worldborn, I really love that your standing level 3 charge is that alley-oop smash. It's nice and quick and I don't feel locked in at any moment. By the time the monster can even think about reacting, they already have a rocket propelled insect drill hammer smacking off their dome and I'm rolling out of the way. By the way, can we take a minute to acknowledge just how awesome the Celtus hammer is? This is a weapon that you can literally get after you do your first real hunt. I don't use the moving charge 3 a lot and try to avoid doing so, but I can't lie, this hammer makes me want to do it just because of how awesome it looks with the rocket propulsion. From what I've seen so far, hammers do get pretty solid designs as well. Let's be real too, up there with cutting a monster's tail, KOing a monster is just one of those super gratifying feelings, especially if you get it on the home run swing after doing a mounting attack. Finally, we have Sword and Shield. Now, unlike the previous weapons that I mentioned, I've loved the Sword and Shield in every game that I've played, and it isn't going to stop with Rise, even if I'm not a huge fan of the changes they made to the directional slashes. This one really isn't much of a prediction, because I can already tell from the short amount of time I've played with the Sword and Shield that it's going to be directly behind the Hunting Horn as far as usage goes. You have an unreal amount of mobility that if I ever do get hit, I don't complain about hitboxes, this or that, I just know that I made the wrong move or overcommitted. And I know that I mentioned earlier about finally being able to craft some status weapons, I can hear that poisonous battle axe calling my name as I type this script. The fluid and seamless combo is still here, and the rushing attack off the ledge is fantastic, and even more potent thanks to For You's easy mounting. It's such a sound and safe weapon, there really aren't many drawbacks to it, and there's definitely no glaring ones that I would call a deal breaker. People may think of it as the beginner weapon, but I'm having a blast with it, and will continue to do so throughout my For You journey. Also, bonus points for being able to guard as well. I have to give a couple honorable mentions to the Dual Blades and Greatsword. The Dual Blades feel extremely fluid and just as devastating as ever. I could be wrong, but it really feels like it's super easy to get your Arc Demon meter filled up as well. And it might be an unpopular take, but I like being in Arc Demon mode way more than Demon mode. The button inputs and moves you have at the ready are much better in my most humble opinion. Now, the Greatsword is, well, the Greatsword. Every charge slash has such a satisfying weight to it, and you pretty much expect the monster to flinch anytime you can land one precisely. 
Not to mention the wide swing very easily gives that same feeling, and when they say wide slash, they mean wide. All right, let's deal with the elephant in the room. Yes, For You isn't going to look like Worldborn. It's not going to look like Rise. I get it, if you're a person that's really a stickler for graphics, I do understand. It helps people to enjoy the total experience and feel even more immersed. I know it's different strokes for different folks, and certain aspects of games or gaming in general are going to weigh heavier for each individual. In saying that, if graphics are going to keep you from trying the older titles, even ones as recent as Gen U and For You, we need to have a serious talk. What makes a good game is a subjective thing. For some people, it's the combat. For some people, it's the gameplay in general. For some, it's the graphics, but what I'm about to say is by no means subjective. For You is an absolutely enriching experience if you're a lover of the Monster Hunter franchise. I'm very early into the game, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being my favorite entry in the series. You may be thinking that its stripped down experience that lacks hunter arts, clutch claws, and wire bugs would be boring, but it's quite the opposite. Like I said at the start of the video, it's much more focused on you knowing your weapon, knowing when to punish, and what you have at the ready at any given moment. It almost feels like a Dark Souls entry of the franchise in comparison to the games that came after it. Now I don't mean that in an elitist way, and I'm not trying to say that Gen U, Worldborn, and Rise aren't real Monster Hunter games, because that's just objectively wrong. Myself being a hunting horn main, I've gotten to see just how far the weapon has come in each iteration of the game. It makes me appreciate those changes that much more. It still feels good in For You, don't get me wrong, but the massive amount of quality of life changes it has received in its lifetime are invaluable. If I never would have started this For You journey, I never would have been able to see or experience that firsthand. It not only gives you another opportunity to pour hours into an incredible Monster Hunter game, but it will enrich the experience you have with future titles. No matter what franchise you're talking about, each game is going to have some proponent that is the standout. I know we have a lot of people coming into the Monster Hunter community with Worldborn's massive success and the looming bombshell of excellence that will eventually be Rise. But if you want to experience peak storytelling in Monster Hunter, you absolutely need to play For You. Do you remember the pretty dope cutscenes we got in Worldborn? Even if you go back to Gen U, you don't get anything like that. In For You though, you get fantastic cutscenes that keep you engaged and plenty of them that lead directly into the fights with the monsters. I've loved every bit of watching a cutscene, with my hands gripped tight on the controller, ready to dodge a monster's attack as soon as the cutscene ends. The story has actually invoked emotion in me, and I cannot say that for any part of Worldborn, so right there off the bat tells you just how good the storytelling is in For You. From the moment you start off on that boat and have to fend off Duren Moran, to the hair-raising first encounter with Gore Magala, you already know this game was made with passion, love, and precision. Don't do yourself a disservice of passing on this game just because it doesn't look like Worldborn. At the very least, you'll have a deeper appreciation for some of the latest improvements, but I'd be willing to bet you come away with a lot more. But that's going to be it for this one. I plan on releasing some more VOD content for For You and may even get a hunting party together for some streams. If you can get your hands on For You when it's on sale like I did preferably, don't sleep on this game. I'm beyond pumped to sink many many more hours into it and who knows, we might get to link up for some hunts. If you liked the video, let me know with that thumbs up. Comment down below some of your favorite memories from For You, or maybe what's holding you back from giving it a try. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Monster Hunter, For You, and other gaming content. Streams, reviews, guides, and more. Have a good night, happy hunting, and I'll see you guys in the next video.